Matthew 28, 18 says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. What does that mean? I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. He's telling them that, hey, I'm the boss now. <laughs> I have been given all authority, all power. And because he was given this, verse 19 says, therefore, therefore means because of that, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of age. Is Jesus with us today? He's with us today. Glory to God. So God, Jesus says, I have been given all authority. And because of that, I am sending you to go and preach the gospel, to make disciples. He didn't say preach the gospel. I'm adding that in. That's because I want to touch, about the, uh, to touch the gospel right now. Jesus calls all of us to preach the gospel. And there's a really sad statistic when it comes to Christians. You guys want to hear it? It's a sad one, but 95% of Christians do not share the gospel if you ask them, have you shared the gospel this year, 95% of the people will say no. It's a really sad statistic. What a sad one. And um, I don't know why we don't do it. Maybe we're scared. Maybe we wait for the right time. Um, there's various reasons. What do I say? What are they going to think of me, right? Are all these things crossing your mind sometimes? That's okay. That's normal. That's, that's literally everybody. I, I have the same thoughts too sometimes. Uh, and you can overcome these. That's the good news. And let's talk about what the gospel is. Roxy said, good news. Um, the gospel, um, there's, there's a few definitions of it. Like we call the first four books of the New Testament the gospel, right? Because that's literally the story of Jesus. But the gospel is also... It means good news. It's the Greek word evangelion, evangelion, which means good news. And it could be it could be several things like good news that we won the battle. Today there's a war in Ukraine. Is any does anybody not know that? Everybody knows. There's a war in Ukraine today, and you can watch this war on TV, right? There's news, there's YouTube, there's even TikTok. <laughs> You can watch news from there, Telegram channels, uh, I don't know, Instagram, Facebook. There's probably other avenues too. You can watch war literally from sitting on your couch. And this is relatively new. That's not a thing throughout history. And back in the day, people would send out an army from their city to go and defend their land. And then they would just wait. There's no Instagram updates. There's no stories. They would just sit and wait. And sometime later, maybe a week, maybe a month, they would see somebody running from far away. And then they would look at the person that's running and they're like, oh, they're, they must have something important. They're running. And, and, and this guy runs in and he says, we won. We overcame. We are free. We defeated the enemy. They are gone. They're routed. They're, they're, they're kicked out. We have won. And this, 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 this is... Evangelion, the good news. The good news about something that has happened. Another, there's, there's one more definition. It's like when a new king is crowned. That's Evangelion. Or like king makes a proclamation. That's Evangelion. Uh, he makes like a new law or some kind of a cool decree that everybody likes. And that's Evangelion. Um, and what the scripture says is the time is near, right? And we don't have a whole lot of time. The world is coming to an end. And Matthew 24, 14 says, And the good news about the kingdom, what does good news mean? Gospel, right? The good news about the kingdom, the gospel, will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear them. We have it pulled up. And then the end will come. So the world is waiting for something. The world is waiting for something. The world is waiting for the gospel to be preached. How many thousands 
hundreds of thousands and millions of people are going to hell today. And we as Christians, we're just silent. Um, we cannot be silent. This world, it's waiting for the gospel to be preached, and it's not complete, and it's not ready until the church is functioning again, brothers and sisters. That's literally what we're called to do. And, and, and some people may, may see it different. I, I don't necessarily mean that you have to stand on a square and shout, right? Or have to have some kind of a big sign that says you're going to hell. There's so many ways to preach. So many ways you can serve God. Um, the story of Marathon, do you guys know where word Marathon comes from? It's actually, there was a battle when the Persians invaded Greece and the guy ran a distance that is now the distance of Marathon to inform the city that we won the battle. And that's where, and, and, and the location where the battle was fought is called Marathon. It's in Greece today. You can find it along the shores of the Aegean. Um, but that's where your word comes from. And this guy brought, he delivered the message to the city. Hey, we won. And I think if I remember the story correctly, don't, don't quote me. I think he died after delivering the message because he ran so intensely. Uh, 26 miles. I think when he made it, he told them we won. And he literally uh, took a room temperature challenge. Um, so... People back in the day, you know, they couldn't watch, <laughs> they couldn't get this information from online. They had to do this scary thing. They had to talk to people. They had to wait for a messenger to come. Um, and Jesus came into this world and he took the authority away from the devil. You guys remember we just read uh, Word of the Week, Matthew chapter 4, where the devil was tempting Jesus. And he, he put him on a high mountain. One of the tests was he put him on a high mountain and he showed them the whole world. And he said, all of this I give to you if you just bow to me. You guys remember that part? That was the, one, or that was the last one, the third one. He said, all of this I will give. The devil was in charge. But Jesus took those keys away. And Jesus set us free. Uh, and so why was Jesus here? He came to preach the gospel he came to preach the good news, the summer of God's mercy, and he came to die for your sin. And through that death, to take away the throne from the devil. So earlier just now, we read that all authority is mine, and now he's sending us. So brothers and sisters, we have been sent. Some people are waiting to be found by God. They're just sitting there, and they're like, well, here I am. I have all my talents Use me, God. I want, to rem uh, I want to remind you a story, a parable that Jesus said about the talents. There was one man who gave ten talents and told him to go use them and make profit. One he gave five and one he gave one. And He said, go and make a profit. Did, did anybody catch in that story, did at any point the master tell the servants where to invest? How to do it? What did he do? He just gave him the coins, right? Talents. And then he said, increase them. Brothers and sisters, today God has given you talents as well. He's given you eyes to see problems all around you that you can fix. You might have a solution to. He's given you eyes for the hurt that is all around you. He's given you words for the people that are in your life, whether it's school, whether it's work, um, home store it does not matter he's given you in these talents an ability to see a problem and he, he he didn't tell you that you should move to another country or that you should be up on a stage in front of 10,000 people he just gave you an ability to see the hurt and what you do with that is your own but there will come a day when he will require the return from you and even the person that buried the talent the the one right at the end of the day, he still came and he said, here is your one talent. I did not increase it and he had some excuse. But everything God has given you is his and it's going back to him. It's going back to him. So we cannot afford to just be silent. We cannot afford to not preach. Whether it's with words or with our own life, even your actions, right? right? You guys all know actions speak louder than words. 
yeah, your actions are important as well. If people in your school, they look at you, and you're not representing Christ as you should, you're preaching, but you're not preaching the gospel. And if people in your high school, they look at you or at your job, and they see that you're different, that you are this light. Today we were singing about, you know, being a lamp that is lit in a city that's bright. If they look at you and they see something, something's different about you. There's something about you that's, that's not like everyone else. And that's because you have the light in you that is Jesus Christ. They want that too. The people in the world are so lost. They're looking for answers. And they don't even realize that Jesus is the answer. Everybody's looking for Jesus. So few find them. What's interesting is Jesus also spoke in parables. Jesus also spoke in parables. And he said, those who have ears, let them hear. He wanted people to actually try to understand the story. He didn't want to chew it all up for them and put it in their mouth. Right? He, he, gave, them, he gave them the food and he's like, prepare it. Here, here's a parable. Here's a story. And, and here's the difference between the Jewish writers and the modern day writers, the Western culture. Right? The Jewish writers... That's why a lot of Bible is like this, actually. They did not write like we do in the West. We write a point, and then we spent this whole time proving it, right? We're like, here's, here, this is a fact, and here is why. The Jews, when they wrote, or really just all Eastern culture, uh, they, they like to hide stuff in the text so that you can read it maybe 10 times and find something new each time. And that's why when you read the Bible, and even when Jesus speaks a parable, you can make like 10, 10 sermons out of one parable, and they're all different topics. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? And so the gospel is just so rich with this, because that's how it was made. And Jesus spoke in parables. Today I will give you a short story about how we preach on the streets. You guys want to hear the stories we tell? We also use parables. Because people will never remember the words, but they'll remember the story. They'll remember how they felt. And then we just drive them straight into the gospel. You guys want to hear a little story? So there was a boy. I can actually even do a theatrical version for you guys. Because we have to be so audible there. Like you have to draw attention. You have to literally be a fool sometimes for the gospel. And that's okay. And we've been kicked out of restaurants, trains, buses. But for Jesus, we're ready to be fools all day long. Say, hello, Kiev. Can you guys hear me? Even you in the back over there. Wave your hand if you can hear me. Renton, Renton? Yeah, yeah, but we do it in Kiev. Renton. Hello, Renton. Is that you, Melanie? I can't tell. Woo. Hello, I see you guys. Good. I'm glad you guys hear me. Today, I'm going to tell you a really cool story. It's a special story. You guys love stories? Yeah. Here it goes. There was a little boy, and he loved to make things with his hands. And one day... He wanted to make himself a little boat. So he got working and he worked on it day in and day out. And eventually, he made this beautiful boat. It had the sails and, and the mast and, 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 and everything, all the little intricate details. It was beautiful. In fact, it was so beautiful that it was like the best thing he's ever made. And he thought to himself, I want to test it out. I want to see how it floats. So he went to the river and he put it in the river. And you know what happened? The wind came and, it, and a boat ran away from him. And he was like, oh no. And he chased after it down the river, but he couldn't catch up. And the boat ran away. And the boy was so sad and he cried, my boat. For a week, he was thinking about it and missing it and crying about it. But eventually, he started moving on. Then one day, mom sent him for some groceries to the town. and He's walking past the store. And he looks at the front of the store, and what do you think he sees? His little boat. He runs into the store as fast as he could. He runs up to the owner, and he's like, listen, that is my boat. Give it back to me. But the owner was a mean man, and he said, nah. Somebody just brought it, and I purchased it. You have to buy it from me. The boy walked away sad and he didn't know what to do. He didn't have any money, but he thought, you know what? I'm going to work and I'm going to make just enough money and I'm going to buy it back. 
and he worked for a week, for a second week. He worked. He was mowing some lawns and building some fans and doing all the things he could do, and he got the money. And as soon as he got the last dollar, he runs into the store, slaps the money in front of the owner, says, give me my boat. And the owner gives him a boat. The boy walks out, ecstatic with joy, and he's like, my boat, my boat, twice you are mine. For once I have made you, and second time I have bought you back. This isn't just a simple story. Do you guys see where this is going? This is a story of your light. And we give the simple gospel, brothers and sisters. This is how easy it is to bring somebody to Christ. We all think that there's some kind of a barrier here, some kind of a door that we can't cross. And I shared a little bit about this on Sunday. Like, like this door that's impassable. What are they going to think? I'm going to look a fool. But brothers and sisters, you can use simple parables like Jesus, little stories. You can have your own story about your own life. But it has to always lead to gospel. And you are this little boat. And the wind came, which is sin. What is sin? It's things that God hates. You list them off. Roxy was speaking about sin today as well. Things that God hates. Have you lied? Have you stolen? And so many others. And, and the scripture says for every sin there must be death. There must be a payment for your sin. Praise God. That Jesus came in the form of a man and he paid back the debt for our sin. And so today we can live free. And if anybody wants forgiveness, if anybody wants to come back to their father, it's that simple.